Hello there, and welcome to episode three of What's Behind the Mask with me, Kat Toronto, also known, of course, as Miss Meat Face. Firstly, I just want to start off this episode by thanking everyone that has tuned in to the last two episodes and you've been sticking it out with me here. Um, I really appreciate you tuning in and watching and giving me your feedback. Um, I'm so excited that I'm finally doing this because um, it's really important for me to share my story with all of you. So let's jump right into episode three, shall we? And I'm going to be discussing the F word in this episode. No, probably not the F word that you think of immediately, but we're going to be talking about fetish. So my own foray, or shall I say the gateway drug for me into fetish, was the world of historical costume. Uh, in the sixth grade, I was in a musical production of The King and I, and the first thing that struck me were the costumes for the main character, Anna. Um, it takes place in the 1860s. Her costumes are comprised of tightly cinched in bodices, tiny waists, massive hoop skirts, uh, and I just immediately was taken with her outfits. Uh, and let's see, I was probably about 11 at the time. Uh, and my mom, uh, she's a seamstress and I begged her to teach me how to sew so that I could start making my own crazy hoop skirt costumes. And that is where it all began really. So yeah, that was, that was my, my little dip into fetish. Um, of course at the time, 11, 12, I didn't know what fetish was. I didn't know you know, what all these <laughs> feelings were <laughs> exactly at the time. But from there, um, I actually kept going with my obsession with uh, historical undergarments and into college um, when I was at the College of Arts and Crafts in Oakland and then later on at the Kansas City Art Institute, um, I focused a lot of my fashion and costume designs um, taken inspiration from historical undergarments. So, um, as you'll see, uh, in what year was it? Jeez, probably early 2000s. I did a whole collection of vintage inspired undergarments, but made from PVC. So made from untraditional materials. And, and I was very into the Gothic cyber Gothic look at the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so this fascination just followed me through into my adulthood. Um, so that's my, uh, personal cat, um, background in my fascination with, um, uh, fetishized objects, specifically women's undergarments. Um, and then it wasn't until, um, I was probably 17 or 18 that I picked up this very book right here, which is Tashin's best of John Willie's Bizarre Magazine book. Um, and thus launched a whole new chapter in, in, in the artistic and personal life of Cat Toronto. Uh, yes, it was through my discovery of John Willie's Best of Bizarre book that I was introduced to the sexualized side of, of fetish and the world of fetish. Um, and when I saw it, it immediately struck a chord within me and I knew I have to find more. What, what is this? Who is this John Willie? Who are these women in these photos? What are these illustrations telling me? Um, so yes, so that was probably when I was, like I said, 17 or 18. Um, and then from there, I went on to discover Exotique, which was another fabulous vintage fetish publication from the 50s and 60s. Um, and this is another Tashin publication. Uh, it's a compilation of the best of, or no, it's not. It's all the volumes, it's all the volumes of the Exotique magazines. Um, and Exotique featured the illustrations 
of uh, Eugene Bilbrew, who was uh, an incredible character, um, and you should actually um, research more about him if if this sort of thing interests you, because he's got an amazing story. He's an African American man. Um, he actually started out as a singer, um, and then he began doing illustrations, um, these amazing fetish illustrations for um, Exotique, um, along the same lines as Eric Stanton. Um, and so, yeah, that's a whole other rabbit hole to go down, and one that I, I will probably do an episode about um, in the future. But if you are not familiar with Exotique and you are very much into the world of vintage fetish publications, um, I highly suggest that you get your hands on this uh, Tashin collection. And so, I just dove down the rabbit hole um, in my early 20s and became obsessed um, with vintage fetish. We're now going to fast forward to mid-2015, and this is when I had already been working back into my self-portraiture photography for a few years. Um, I had done the Spirit Saints, and by mid-2015, um, this is when Miss Meat Face, as we know and love her, really started to flower. Um, and coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, this is also when I met my now current partner, my husband, Gary, and he introduced me to a whole new world of amazing vintage fetish magazines. So I just wanted to introduce all of you to these magazines in case you were not aware of them. But um, Miss Meat Face grew exponentially out of me discovering these, or I shouldn't say discovering, but um, me being introduced to them. The first magazine that um, sparked it all um, was Adam Age. Now, Adam Age magazine was started in the 1970s by John Sutcliffe. Um, John Sutcliffe um, was here over here in Britain, and he was an incredibly talented designer, um, but he was also a latex leather and PVC fetishist. Um, he, he was a commercial designer, but he also did costume designs. He actually did all of the costume designs for the Avengers stage play over here. Um, and, and I, when I say the Avengers, I mean, um, uh, the Avengers as in Honor Blackman, Diana Rigg, um, Patrick McNee as Steed, um, that, those Avengers. Um, <laughs> But, as another homework assignment, um, if this sort of thing interests you, fascinates you, as it did me, I would highly recommend you do more research into John Sutcliffe and his background. So just as a little aside, highly recommend. <laughs> so Adam Age started me out, and it was the, the vernacular style um, aesthetic of the photographs, and it felt like, it felt like with these images in Adam Age that people were just letting you into their home. It was just like, oh, here we are, just relaxing in the living room in our rubber, but you know, oh, it's just everyday life, you know? And and that's what I loved. And and I, I love the accessibility of it. And that's also something that I wanted to bring into Meat Face and is also really important in my Meat Face work is that I want to be able to invite the viewer in as if you know, I just opened the front door and you were standing there. Oh, well, just come on in. Just have a cup of tea. You know, have a seat. Have a seat in the parlor and we'll just have a nice little chit chat. And, you know, it just coincidentally happens that we're all dressed in rubber. Um, and I love that. I absolutely love that. And there's a, a charming, endearing quality um, to that for me. My husband also introduced me to uh, magazines like Dressing for Pleasure, which was a little offshoot of Adam Age as well, and John Sutcliffe did have something to do with that. There was also Pussycat Magazine, which is a fabulous 1960s, like it started in the 60s, and it's kind of like swinging 60s latex magazine, which is really fun, um, and also gives you a peek into latex in the 60s. Um, and so it was through these magazines that Miss Meat Face really blossomed. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's, that's really, um, 
a little quick peek into my background in fetish as Kat and then how Miss Meat Face um, fit into that as well and how she grew out of my fetish fascination. Um, so I think I'm going to, gosh, that went by quick. <laughs> um, I guess I'm just going to wrap up this episode here, but you know, I might actually continue on with a part two of this episode um, and maybe a bit more show and tell um, because there's a lot more that I could go into but of course this could also be their own episodes so we shall see shall not we <laughs> thank you so much for coming along with me on episode three on this crazy weird new <laughs> journey with me um i hope that you enjoyed it found some inspiration from it um was intrigued by some things i said um and yeah thanks for coming along with me and i am having a lot of fun doing this as nerve-wracking as it is as well it's a lot of fun and i really appreciate you coming along with me so um please if you're enjoying it hit subscribe below and also if you want to find me on the web elsewhere i'm on instagram twitter youtube of course TikTok, facebook and i'm also on buy me a coffee where if you feel so inspired you can contribute towards a pack of film from one of my upcoming shoots and i am so so thankful thank you i greatly appreciate all of your support so yeah Thank you for joining me, and that's been episode three of What's Behind the Mask. And of course, I'm Kat Toronto, also known as Miss Meat Face. Mwah.